Hello there, what we are looking at today is open source and proprietary software as part of the OCR J276 GCSE Computer Science specification. So today, as I previously mentioned, we are focusing on open source software and proprietary software. Here are the learning outcomes for today's lesson. We can see that the differences between all challenger export is looking into the more level of detail and more level of depth. So if you're aiming for expert, you really need to make sure that we're not just writing bullet points or single sentences, we're looking at things in paragraphs. So proprietary software is proprietary software, for example, looking at Google Chrome, where you're probably viewing through this, is software which is subject to copyright and users acquire licenses. Sometimes the licenses are free, so for example with Google Chrome, you can download that for free. The p software I'm using with this, OBS, I've downloaded it for free, but it's still proprietary software, you've got to require the license to use it. When you purchase the latest version of FIFA, or if you are downloading the latest version of Fortnite, again, there are restrictions on what you can and can't do with it it's proprietary software. The advantages of proprietary software is that because people have either paid for it or rely on it a lot, it's tested and developed thoroughly. So if there are any bugs, they get ironed out and hopefully removed before they are available for download and use. Uh, there's regular updates and fixes, which means that if there are bugs or any requested features, that these come about quite quickly and swiftly for the community to use. And there's usually support available. If people are buying into software, they want to be able to make sure that there is help ready for their every beck and call whenever they need it. However, because proprietary software is created by someone for an overall purpose, it's not bespoke solutions. So if I'm wanting to create a program with a specific purpose, with specific features, I wouldn't be using proprietary software, I'd want something custom based. Support updates, yes they can be provided, but there might be some costs associated with them. And again, the support can have a cost associated to it. So proprietary software is great if you need something standard, so for example, something like um, Microsoft Word or Google Docs, the proprietary software is there to use, but if you want something more customized or you want to try and cut costs, proprietary software isn't for you. So, activity one, I want you to, me I want you to show me your knowledge of proprietary software, I want to know what it's for, who it benefits, why it's needed, when is it applicable to use it, and what are the disadvantages of using it. And remember, if you're going for the challenge or the expert, you need to be make sure you're moving on from bullet points and single sentences and going to paragraphs. You can now pause the video and then we'll carry on in just a second. So now we are going to be looking at open source software, which is freely available software which can be upgraded, changed, distributed with no fee. Some examples of this include uh, the Linux operating system, which people are able to customize, edit and change with no repercussions. The main proviso is that if it is edited or changed, that when you redistribute it, you cannot charge any costs for it. The whole idea of open source uh, is that people can look at it, edit it, change it and use it for their own means. So if we're thinking about bespoke software, that is probably going to be more leaning towards open source because it's something that's been created for a particular purpose. Obvious solutions for open source is that it's free to use, so there are no costs associated with it and you can edit and modify it quite happily. The source code itself is made available and can be modified. Uh, there's a large community for support, especially if you're looking at particular operating systems such as Linux. There are massive communities out there where if someone's got needs any help or any questions or any support, they're there ready to willing to answer. However, because of that community support, um, if an open source piece of software isn't developed or isn't used for a while, the community unfortunately fades away because no one is using it, so that can be a bit of a downside. Additionally, it might require specialist knowledge to either install or to use because if it's not proprietary software, they're not creating it to any standards, it's on an as-fit measures. It may not be fully tested or developed and the usage for it may not be straightforward, so it might not be as easy to use from when you first look at it. So the last activity we're going to be looking at today is again showing your knowledge of open source software. You can see there what you need to do. And again, you need to make sure that if we're explaining and evaluating, we are going into more depth. You are saying what you're talking about, you are backing it up, and then we're looking at advantages and disadvantages. I hope this lesson has been useful for you. I hope it works good and I shall see you in another lesson. See you later.